That white ball represents the heart. That's the when they talk about the core of a globe earth, this is what they talk about in the middle of this energy field. Where the comp zero, this is zero degrees on the compass. Okay. Right here. Okay. So what's going on right here is you got the sky vault above, if you're familiar with ancient cosmology. Then you got the Sheol, you got this opening in the earth. The energy is recycling through our universe at the middle right here, just like in your body. All of the blood and energy that's circulating above your heart is flowing downward into the heart like this chart say. All of the energy that's below your heart is flowing upward into the heart. And all that energy is crashing at the heart, causing some call a heartbeat. The moment the heart stopped beating, all, your body blowed up, them liquids released back into the body. You pop open. We know the decomposition process. I ain't going to gross y'all out. But I'm explaining to you how the energy flow. And the heart is also synonymous with the word center, central. When we say, hey, the heart of a building, the heart of a temple is synonymous with center. I don't want to confuse the people and throw them off, you know. Uh, Cause we got a very synced up understanding of how this go, and I ain't really trying to debate. But I appreciate your input, Queen. Uh, I, I I just I never understand the heart chakra being the root chakra, and I actually think that's kind of desecration and a misinterpret. The heart chakra ain't really a chakra; it's a vortex that allow the three chakras above and three chakras below to have a release point. This where the energy is released out of the heart. But you know, we we we, we can we can go deep into this though. And and one more thing, when you stated about the cross or the line that comes be between um, the two waves of the music, the pattern when it's going and it's centered and it's just a little string that connects the two, that reminded me when Christians say you have to go to the cross because the cross is the way to get to the other side of where you are. You don't want to be in a place where you are. So they like go take it to the cross. I don't know, you know, but maybe I'm stretching it. Because, but, but when you said it's a cross, I'm thinking you got to cross from one side to the other. And just like the picture of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, when you said this is the different sides of your brain, you know. The thing about the heart chakra, like I was saying earlier, heart is synonymous with the word center for a reason. The heart chakra is shaped like this entire tetrahedron for a reason. Because this entire tetrahedron is emanating from the core of our being. The word zen is the root word of central, central. And the concept of meditating and going inside of yourself is exploring the core of the soul or what we call in this, the, the, this light within, the light inside of us at the core. And it's, it's the heart chakra is what they were referring to. I'm just sitting here just building off the fact that it's other worlds with more chakras because it's a higher level of existence in different bodies. Like we always explain, different on every single realm of reality are different dimensions and alternate versions of ourselves. It's different body, and we can only shuffle the consciousness to one at a time. And it's like, like you said, I'm pretty sure the Vedics and stuff like that in India, they had those like a chakra and stuff like that because they was tracking time and science that was in more than one world. They was tracking the science of that world in the higher realm and the one in the lower realm. That's kind of how like the Mayans was doing with the Mayan calendar shit. What's happening at the, at the middle of our universe is a flip upside down. What's that movie? The, the upside down? What my movie head said, I'm going to need help with this shit. That was Us uh, by that Jordan. Was the Stranger Things, Us. Matter of Never. fact, they, and they got this upside down and, and a lot of shit, matter of fact, huh? This yeah. whole concept. This was Inception. happening. Yeah, this was happening with the upside down. So, like, if you ever saw this before, it's very weird to see, right? What's happening is... Since the atmosphere have refract refractive and reflective properties, 
you know, images can be reflected and reflect, refracted on the atmosphere. Just like we see here, like we see a ship on one dimension in our world and then it's, pro it's reflecting itself upward in an inversion. That, my friend, is what Saturn represents right here. This is the true nature of our universe right here, y'all. So this is the whole thing about the tethering between the uh, two two uh, worlds. It's, it's, it's right here, the, up, the part of the good, what I was just explaining with you with this tetrahedron. The word tetra is also a derivative in a relation to the word tether, tether. This tetrahedron shows you how your dual consciousness are tethered together into one like Christ and the Father making the Holy Ghost, which is this tetrahedron, the Holy Ghost dove. Now check this out, y'all. If you look at this phenomena right here, this is how the ethers are tethered together. And if you keep stacking them, and like I said, what is that? Reversing polarity. I just I just pointed that out. I showed you uh, reverse polarity for my musicians and shit like that. But another way of looking at reverse polarity of one world fading or crossing over into another one like what we see here is exactly this horizon mirage. This mirage actually holds a secret of what's happening on an ethereal level. When you say polarity, reversing polarity, what I was teaching earlier, that has the word polar in it, dealing with the North Pole. When I was talking about reverse polarity, I was teaching like what happens at the North Pole. Remember what started this? We was watching a documentary on Nikola Tesla. But see what I'm saying about this, right? Watch this. You got one tree that grew in the middle of a lake. You see this? But since the tree grew in the middle of a lake, it copied itself in an infinity code where it's now growing up and down. And at the same rate it grow upward, it grow downward. Like the more we incarnate and the more righteous you get in your next world when you're when you like, man, I'm more loving, I'm more caring, I'm more wise, I'm more of a Buddha, right? At that point, you also going to be more evil, more demonic, because guess what? The wiser we get, we can use that to be more good or more evil, because look, the more stronger you get now with these new powers, when somebody make you mad or it's time for you to do some evil, what you the damage you can do now is greater, which will lead to more karma though now because you can do more damage. So the universe is saying, I'm going to give you a little bit of your powers at a time because if I give a baby all of they, if I give a baby a gun and all that and weapons like an adult, and, and, and bound it to the same universal laws of it, with everything else, what the universe is doing, the baby will accumulate so much jail time for itself before it even understands life because it's you empowering it too early. So that's the same thing with nature, like the whole purpose of us having to get this knowledge is spoon feeding it to us in incarnations. Because if it's giving you all of these God-like powers when your ego ain't ready for it yet, the damage that you can do as this advanced spiritual being acting like a baby just because somebody made you mad, you can now be this spiritual bully which is kind of like what the people in power is. But see what that'll do, that will make your karma even greater now. That's like the dude who know how to make a knife, he ain't going to get that much jail time versus a dude that know how to make a fucking atom bomb. They going to lock, he going to get. So once you learn more and how to be more destructive, once you see this knowledge going to make you not only a better angel, it's going to make you a better demon. But if the path of ascension is that, even though this knowledge gives me an ability for me to exercise it over others and be a demigod, I'm not. I'm going to just exercise, use my energy for my own climb upward up the tree of ascension. The opposite of that would be using my energy to harvest other people's energy. And now we all stuck on one level. But when you look at this tree of, uh, image that I'm showing here, I'm showing it for a reason. I want to know if any of y'all ever saw the ancestors uh, show the cosmos. Matter of fact, let me show it myself. Now, this is what the Vedic said that our universe is. Are y'all seeing this right here? 
Now then we gonna compare that to the image right here. It's the same shit. See, you got a, a, a world above, which is the real world, but this world below, that's a reflected, refracted version of the real world, and that was created by the archons. See, this represent the technological world down here. This is, see, the whole thing about us getting kicked out of eating is the same thing about the growth of this tree makes it grow higher toward the heavens, but it also cast is cast it. We got you, brother. Let me say one thing and we'll come to you. See what happens is when they talk about the spanning universe, this tree is casting a image below. When they talk about Satan being casted down onto the earth below, that's like God is the, the true. And when they talk about I am the true God, the reason they saying true God is because that's like me telling you. The true tree is the one standing upright and toward the heavens. That's the true tree. But the fake tree, the deceiver, that's Satan, the one cast it down, making a reflection in the waters. You see what's going on here? And when you see what's when you, you see this, it becomes the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of hell, where down in this underworld, we're not our true self. We're an ego, we're a fake form of ourselves. And above here on this path of ascension, we become these what they call true gods. Now, what would be the opposite of a true god? A fake devil. And this what this tree is separating the true gods from the fake ass devils. Now, let's go ahead, y'all. Uh, uh, this ain't no hard stuff what the Hindu was saying. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm asking you to prove it. That's what I've been doing, though. I said that a tornado is made by polarizing winds and that it's a cold front and a warm front coming together to create a tetrahedron, which is a vortex. Then I'm showing this image to show what the tornado is. And I'm also showing it to say that the heart, our heart energy, our electromagnetic energy field is this same vortex. Prove it. I already did though. I don't see how. Prove see what, what, I, what I need to be. What, what, what I need to be He's asking you. It okay. With shapes. Okay. So so look, no, I'm not proving it with shapes. I'm proving it with science. See, here's what's going on right now. So tell me the science. I, I want everybody to stop talking while I do that. First of all, you're proving to me you don't know what a vortex is. Any source of energy has a core or a singularity that is emitting that energy outward from a source. That core and that source is a vortex. That's called a center of magnetism. Your body is producing, uh, uh, producing energy. Anything that produces energy creates an energy field. And again, at the core of all these energy fields is the source or a vortex that launched the field out. So when I got to teach niggas how they heart work, how they auric work, it gets sad when they think they doing something and they cute and they go to giggling and stuff. This is not the time to giggle, man. It's the time to learn. We getting old and we got grown folks that don't know this complicated science that I'm breaking down. And they think it's a joke and they think it's a game and they think that the ancestors ain't know what the hell they was talking about with all this electromagnetic energy field because it goes over their damn heads. But what I don't like is science can tell these niggas about diamond planets and all all kind of crazy shit and they don't say prove it prove it they say we live on a globe and they don't say prove it and i prove everything and you still say prove it and i'm sitting here dropping mad science if it's going over your head like a halo then that's your problem not ours if i did a chat vote most of the people <laughs> understand what the hell i'm saying humble yourself if you got questions otherwise say nigga I ain't humble i got smoke you don't know what you talking about and i want to debate and we'll get a moderator and a time clock up i'm not scared let's go who, who trying to debate you i want you to prove don't get scared now nah, brother don't get scared now nah, brother what you mean you just brother i just proved it man <laughs> i just proved it and i just taught it and i don't want to hear from what you no you more you're, you're a troll brother let's move on 
I prove, nigga, that you don't know what the hell an uh, energy field is, is what the fuck I prove. <laughs> Full alert. We, we too deep to waste time with what did you prove? But did you prove it, though? When you sit there and go into detail and teach all this stuff and a nigga's answer it, but you still ain't prove it, though. But did you prove it, though? And I'm proving it to you, dude. To you to say I didn't prove it is to who won't smoke in the chat room? Who's saying I ain't proving it? Let's go. Because I'm telling you right now, it's a simpler explanation I, I just gave, bro. If you don't I your, won't smoke, man. Listen, your body is a source of energy. And at the core of all, and listen, if your body is a source of energy, all sources of energy emit an energy field. And I'm going to show you how that looked like in cymatics. Look, here it is right here in cymatics. Every object emit energy around you has a field around it. And if your body is emit energy, why ain't they teaching you about this electromagnetic field coming from your heart? Because they don't want you to know this language and they want dumb, playful niggas to come up here when I'm serious and think they finna snicker and giggle. Man, I'm a serious teacher, like a professor at the university. The class clown energy is going to be met with strong resistance. I'm the only comedian on this motherfucker. Hey, Sanchez. Yeah. I can't understand what you were saying because didn't the ancestors really... They they thought like the heart was like more important than the brain, like spiritual wise. The heart and the brain are interconnected. That's like saying the steering wheel more important than the tires. Yeah, I got what you say. I get you. I get you. But like First they said, like thought and stuff came from the heart instead of the brain, like they say today, though. You're right. The heart, I'm agreeing with you. The heart is the source of it all. That's what I keep telling them. The heart, the heart is the source of all the energy, which is why when the heart stops beating, all the energy leaves the body. It's yeah, that I was going to say that too. Like yeah, he, but that's, who would, that's, but, but that's the question energy. is, but, but the question is, who the fuck would debate that, y'all? <laughs> Is a heartbeat energy? <laughs> prove it though. Prove it. Prove it. Prove that. Prove that I'm energy. Prove that I'm energy. Prove that I'm electromagnet. Like I don't got, bro. He got a, a lot of growing up. To it's do a self. That. It's a self-sustaining engine. Nah, bro. It's just bro as an asshole, nigga. We not finna sit here and re-explain everything that was perfectly put. He just an asshole because he want to tell another nigga to do his work. I'm sick of grown mm. niggas their homework. That shit pisses me the fuck off on Facebook, on YouTube, in real. Stop asking another grown man to do your own personal homework if you don't get it after they didn't gave your ass a full presentation. The brother was just trying to say, he was just trying to get a deeper. Don't thought. do that. Don't do that. Don't do that shit. Don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's the only way he'll grow, man. The brother didn't understand. The brother didn't understand. No, the brother didn't say I didn't understand. He said I didn't prove it. If he would have blamed it on his lack of understanding, I would have respected that. He blamed it on my lack of proof. I don't respect that. And that's what's worse, worse about it, because this nigga actually said I understand it. You just didn't prove it. It's like, what the fuck? So that's why I, I said don't speak for him. I'm not finna yeah. do this with you niggas. You, you can play with that nigga, but we not. Let's move on. This is cymatics, and I want to explain yeah. some about cymatics, right? Let's get some etymology. The root word of cymatics is sim, and that's dealing with simulation. That's dealing with, you know, them things that they use in a band, a cymbal. When they crash, pew, crash together, the cymbal, you know? Uh, all why a symbol uh, crashing together, right, is what this pattern make right here. You know, in a band when they crash this, I'm finna break the etymology down. See, this waveform is like two symbols crashing together, making that crash noise. Boom. So the word crash became the word Christ, 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 Christos. 
dealing with the one mounted up at this middle point right here, what I'm telling you. But how deep y'all want to go? See, when we deal with cymatics, that's what these damn energy fields are. Each human is their own unique star that's 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 fucking uh, twinkling. That's what these is. These right here are what the stars are in the sky, y'all. Right here. I got a question, Sanchez. Yeah. I just want to know, like, like, what did you learn this knowledge from? Like, not debating or nothing. I just, no, I really I, no, that ain't no debate. That's a good question. Right. So I learned this knowledge by researching cosmology in the ancient world. And uh, if you want me to go deep, that's a very simple answer. If you want to say, Brother Sanchez, you know, go a little bit deeper with that answer. I can do that for you, too. You want me to do that? Yes, sir. All right. So here's, for example, right? And you know I've been researching this a while. Some of these collages I made six years ago. What I started researching, what made me make this one, was researching about the god Saturn, right? For example, when I researched the god Saturn <clears throat> and how I came to my conclusions, uh, uh, syncretism, etymology, symbolism, let me show you something. Here go to God Saturn right here. And I said to myself, now there's always some intent behind your research. The intent behind my research was something about these symbols fascinated me. How I even got into this style of research, my brother, is I became fascinated with little bitty gods, little bitty cosmologies, like shit like this, for example. I was fascinated by like stuff like this, these little gods and like the bent feet, little weird ancient symbols like the Nazca lines. I don't know why I just begin this whole fascination with ancient symbols and ain't like this dude here, Saturn. Like I just began a fascination with all these symbols in the past. But then I didn't even think to myself to sink into technology until just a few years ago. I've been on a journey of trying to understand all these ancient symbols. And in my journey, it led me to this point today. Watch this. Now, when I first was studying Saturn, I ain't gonna lie to you, brother. I was in the pseudo land with it. On some man, Saturn, you know, on some pseudo spookism shit. Now today, as I understand these symbols, Saturn is the ancestral way of them personifying technology. And my whole journey has led me to see that the ancestors weren't dummies. When I see this dude with the rings around his waist and that he's the one eye God, Saturn, look what's at the top of that pole, a one eye, this the Thor hammer. This was the God that they worship called a Cyclops with the one eye at the top. I can show you another form of this same technology. Watch this. When you look at this Tesla tower, that one-eyed God is mounted at the top with his electricity. This is a bigger version of this small tower. And you can see the electricity coming from the top. Same way, micro, macro. But what are we looking at? What, what I learned was that studying this technology in this ancient world, that the ancestors were into advanced technology. And they were so damn advanced with the understanding of their technology, they was able to teach it in a mythological way. It's one thing for an electrician to understand how a copper wire should be tied around a pole and all of this complex science. It's another thing for him to be able to teach that in a poetic way using this God to a child to make a 10-year-old be an electrician. See, in our world, you can't be an electrician till you do all of these years of school because they don't want your mind to advance at a young age because at a young age, they want to kill your ass, get you caught up in gangs, all that. We know the predatory system. People, I'm telling y'all, back in the ancient world, we were way more advanced and children as young as ages 15 and 12 was on a level of some of our Harvard graduates in the ancient world because of the mythological way that they was teaching this stuff. We don't see it today, but I'm going to show you when you look at stuff like this, right? When you look at the God Saturn, 
a lot of people who don't have my knowledge, they would have to say what well, a God Saturn is a bunch of pseudoscience, religious stuff. But the God Saturn, right? Let me teach you something. It's dealing with you. Here is what Saturn was used to teach. The Lord of the Rings is you and me. And the word Saturn is dealing with the word saturation. Our energy has saturated all of the ethers, meaning that you exist in a multiverse. Your consciousness has shined through all of these veils and every layer of the universe that your light pierced through created a copy for you in that realm. And this is how we dream. This was advanced knowledge that we was able to go into the spiritual and the physical. Today, science and religion are separated. And they shouldn't be because there's a science to the spirit. There's a science to light. There's a science to the unseen world. So we're saturated. Our energy has saturated all of these ethers. And we've copied ourselves in every universe. This is saturation. Just like when you drop a rock into a water. And the uh, water is saturated with the energy from above landing below. And it creates a ripple effect. And the saturation as the water dispersed the energy from the center of impact point of singularity outward. It disperses it in a ripple effect pattern. And nature don't change that pattern. This is what a DNA wave is. When you strand two of these together, in other words, what happens in a ripple effect situation? Watch this. What happens in a ripple effect situation is every now and then, you'll get two ripples cross over into each other. That's mama and daddy. Look at here. You'll get one ripple that, that bleeds and merge with another ripple, and this is what they will create. And this is the vesica Pisces, what allowed Jesus to enter, uh, because that, that creates a whole nother ripple in and of itself. That's the fish in the middle. Watch this. When we see Jesus coming out this vesic of Pisces here, this is DNA. Th these are a bunch of ripple effects expanding universes all merging together to create. And the universe that they make in the middle is the one that we're in. That's why it always shaped like a Taurus field. Two merging universes, the sun and moon, the master. This is what you're in. They're reverse engineering this. Let me show you something. It's a thermal fusion reactor. Why do they call it fusion? Because I just taught y'all this, man. I taught you how we're fused together with the underworld and this world creating a joker effect. This is what your heart is right here. Watch this. This is what your heart is. Look. Left and right ventricle. Your heart is a torus field. Look at this heart. Now look at this machine. Look at the MasterCard symbol. And let's go back to your heart. Now let's go back to the MasterCard symbol. See, people, I'm giving you a cheat code. People go to school for years to make these connections. And all you got to do is open up your damn third eye. And quit arguing and debate. Since you think he know it all. I get that a lot. Watch this, y'all. This shit right here. E every time you get two ripples to come together, they make a human. And every time you get two worlds to come together, they make a mitt where we at now to rep. This is what our sun and moon making. Our sun That's and moon. Yeah, sure. Um, um, not necessarily people think you know it all. But I feel, I mean, like, how oh, you don't got to, you don't got to respond to that. I was just, just, you know. Being... No, but I'm saying, how long have you been doing your studies? Like, how, how much for, for about damn near a decade now that I think about it, I'm about to yeah, come see, up on well a decade. Well yeah, I'm about to well come deserved. up on a decade here, man. Yeah. 
So, yeah, so it seems like you know it all, but yeah, you just have different things you plugged into and you know about. So, yeah, I get you. But, uh, yeah, um, even this God here, like I said, with ancient symbolism, here's a God that I studied. Have you ever heard of him? His name, the Dagda. You ever, anybody? Nope. nope. Yeah, here you see how he's representing this same Taurus field. See, they use this God, the Dagda, to teach about the electromagnetic energy field. But today we think that our ancestors didn't know about all this. But I'm showing you even the Celtic people, they said the white folks is slow. They didn't know nothing. Man, the whole world had, this, this was a universal knowledge at one point. Everybody was expressing it in their own way. When you see that God in the middle of them trees, this is talking about us right here. They even told this story in China. They got Buddha wrapped around a tree. You ever saw Buddha wrapped up with the tree? This Can image, you describe that image? Thanks. This image is crazy right here. How I interpret this, what Tesla was doing, he had created an electromagnetic torus field around his whole building. Meaning if you were tr at a certain perimeter, you would be like a firmament dome, an invisible wall of electromagnetism. Because look, look at how the uh, electricity is bursting out the dome of this thing. What he's mimicking is basically the crown chakra. And then it'll burst and it'll go around the body. For example, right, let's go to here. We see that electricity coming up out the top like that. Then this is what's happening up here at the at the at our crown, this crown chakra. That's going to create this sort of waterfall type pattern and where you got, hold on, actually I got a slide that'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. I ain't know I was going to have to pull this out, but it's going to be like a spigot pattern all around the head. And then when it lands like a bunt cake pattern, it, it's going to be, a, since it's happening below and above, they're going to kiss each other right there. And that's how you get this image and why Saturn. And so what's happening is the, en the energy is, is being emitted like this arch pattern, like what we see in, uh, right here. And that's why I said he got this sort of this fit energy field around the uh, building. Now, there are Marvel comic characters that they can use their electromagnetic superpower to make this bubble around themselves. And it can't nobody fuck with them. They can't come in that bubble. And to me, this is kind of what's going on because you don't see nothing in sight. It's very eerie. It's almost like this nigga lunched this bubble around itself the sky darkened he made his own little bubble of on, outside of this bubble it may be daytime and all that but in this little tesla bubble is gray is electricity thunder he fucking with some shit uh tesla was up he was trying to recreate the ether and that's i think they don't tell us what this picture mean but I do think that that's what he was doing in this when he was trying to cr uh, create this fit feel around that building. Yeah, and I think um, he understood that um, during certain weather weather patterns, uh, a high level of ions, what they call ions, is in the atmosphere. So if you build the right uh, conduit or conductor, you can harness different energy um, that the earth and the atmosphere produces. It's like siphoning because because what's going on is this right the the electric energy that Tesla using ain't coming from his building he's siphoning it up out of the sky into the building then it goes through a grounding grounding sort of filtering process and it's distributed back upward from the ground back into the building where it'll be sucked back into this tower is like a double highway, like the Taurus field. So it's pop. He's, he's siphoning electric energy. Now, once it start flowing, it's going. Now you can't stop it. Just like siphoning. Here's a, a ancient conception of how that'll look. You will have this pyramid and it'll, what'll be mounted at the top of the pyramid is this little much ball of light right here. See, if you look at this, the North Pole, and it looked like a Santa Claus hat because you got a triangle, which is Mount Maru, 
and this spark coming up out of this is why the pyramid ain't capped. This is the all seeing eye above that uncapped pyramid. You know what I'm saying? So this is what we looking at right here too. The siphoning of that energy. And then we can see the same thing here uh, that we see right here too with Tesla's idea. So yeah. A good we I think we connecting some shit, yo. Cause I mean it ain't that much different. It's only people be like, it's easy cause it's only one truth, if you ever heard that statement before. And that one truth is this secrets of what's happening at the place where all of our compasses is pointing to. Uh, Sanchez, thank you for this awesome platform for open thought. Um, I just wanted to add some stuff about the chakra. So um, it, I thought I thought that was very interesting, the chakra discussion. I've heard you talk about it on several occasions. So, um, so what I realized is the chakra is very interesting in the sense that, so if you look in Psalms 82, I'm a Hebrew, so I'm going to bring that in. It says, Yah says, ye are deities. You know, like, uh, some people would say, ye are G-O-Ds, ye are L's. Um, and all of you are the children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like the one of the princes, like one of the princes. And um, so what I establish here is that initially when Yah made man, he made man upright. And that's in Ecclesiastes 7.29. Lo, this only have I found that Yah have made man upright but they have sought out many inventions. So now with that said, it seems like for a short period, right? If you look into the history of our people, if you believe that we're Hebrews, um, our people, the Israelites ruled, you know, righteously as a people, you know, as a beacon of hope to the rest of the world um, uh, with the as laws. We kept his laws, we kept his commandments, uh, causing us to be abundant. Um, and I mean, many nations were even paying tribute to David, our ancestor. Um, so what I know, so let me go into it so I don't bore you. What, what I notice is our enemies, because I try to, what I try to do is I take your show and I try to apply it to my real life. I try to see, wait a minute, how could I apply this? Because I'm an engineer. I went to school for engineering. I do software testing right now. So everything I do, I try to bring it back home to how I could apply it. And so our enemies gained knowledge of who we are and who Yah was, okay? How Yah was really close to us and he did things. So what I notice is... Um, as it relates to the chakra, um, you notice that in Western societies, they became insanely rich when they allowed uh, for the degradation um, uh, of, you know, us being righteous people down to unrighteous people. And it seems like the ruling class seems to get richer the more they open up new levels of chakra or knowledge to our people that was probably banned before. So, for example... We know the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, you know, uh, honor your father and your mother, etc. But if you look at the rap music, it's like they're going in the opposite direction. They're closing certain uh, paths of chakra and opening new ones that were not allowed by Yah in the past. And now that we're allowing these things to open, it seems like the world, because Yah calls us judges. We are the judges of the whole earth. But if you look, the world follows our people. The, the so-called African-Americans, they literally follow us. Whatever we do, they tend to, you know, copy. But what the ruling class have done, they understood our chakra, okay, our energy, our power. And while they've done this, they flipped it around. They flipped it around so that they indeed could be in power and we could not be in power because yeah, I made it clear. We keep his commandments. This, you know, this is our chakra. Keep his commandments. We, fr we thrive. We don't keep his commandments. We be at the bottom. And that's exactly what's happening. If you bro look. Brother, 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 brother. I thought you were going to come. Let me show you what happened here. And I'm going to see if I'm the only one peep game. The brother started off with the chakra stuff to get our attention. And then he just went on his whole, you know, broke the laws <laughs> up your Howard shot. He sneaked that in good. Y'all peep that, right? Hey, dude. Like, that was a small ass like, sentence. Yeah, he, 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 he did yeah. that, though, because he that was a cold Bob and Weed, yeah. my brother. Salute it to was. You. <laughs> now the brother yeah, shout out to the brother, man. The brother yeah. was going in. Okay, so, right, so look, so look, I tell you, I tell, I tell you what, I tell you the what I'm gonna do. Only thing I would tell is, I'm sorry, if I'm too loud. I, 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 hold on, my, my bad. One thing I want to say to the brother, though, with all due respect, bro. I respect the Hebrews, and I do give you guys a hard time. 
Man, you can have a respectful discussion here just for a minute then. I have a hard time thinking about saying that the reason for all of this uh, atrocities that my people is going through is because we broke the commandments of some imaginary God in the sky when I can see that the reasons for everything my people going through is because of biological warfare, social engineering, indoctrination. And if we don't deal with the real things and keep blaming it on some mythological things, we don't see the real reason why we going through what we going through because some Hebrews saying it's because you turned away from Yahweh no, it's because you turned your back on your enemy and he starts stabbing you in it. You ain't looking at what your, en your enemy, the, the, the enemy never wanted us to see that he was the source of our evil. So he gave us a God and said, well, you didn't do what God wanted you to do. And that God was always his God, though. We was a slave. That's the indoctrination part. Manifest destiny allowed these people to justify all of the atrocities they did to us under the guise of your sinner. God want us. This is God's will. God want this to happen to you because you turned away. So they giving you a, a, a answer that would benefit the enemy who don't want you to fight back because he got you thinking your enemy is a red dragon. He gave you a God that looked like him and an enemy that's a red dragon that looked like a monster. You know why he did you like that? Because you don't see that the image of God is the image of your enemy. And he had to give you another image of your enemy that didn't look nothing like him. And he couldn't give you Buddha. He couldn't give you Allah. So he said, just give him a dragon. Guess what, y'all? And that'll scare them in their mind of, man, the devil the reason why you got that cholesterol. The devil the reason these kids going and shooting each other up. No, social engineering is. Programming is. And when, when, when they can create another language that can give them an out on a spiritual and moral institutions that's supposed to be, because that's what the church is there for, to have a code of morality. But the people that's create the most immoral acts on humanity have an out but through those very institutions that say they're protecting us because they will justify the, all the evils that's happened. I remember I asked my deacons coming up in the South, why are those children in Africa suffering, suffering so much? He said, because they practice voodoo. They mamas and daddies don't serve the true God. Now, some of y'all on this panel are like, damn, nigga, that's cold. And some of y'all are like, I know what you talking about, bro, Sanchez. Nigga, it's cold like that. They, nigga, I was told them motherfuckers in Africa is starving and all that because they asses is wicked, they evil, and they turned away from the truth. Just like what you just said. Not the Hebrew, Hebrew. Go ahead, go ahead. So I, I hear what you're saying, but I partially disagree with that, but I agree with the other parts. Um, number one, Yah did not give us a religion, so I don't follow any religion. New, the New Testament, you're right, that is a deity that they created for us. Um, but I don't follow that. I, I personally, and a lot of Hebrews, we follow Yah, which is the first five books and the prophets. So in the prophets and in the first five books, it doesn't tell us to blame the devil. Yah created the devil, so we don't blame the devil. Uh, Yah actually tells us to blame ourselves for not following yeah, his commandments. Just, just commandments. A, a, a quick interjection, though. I wasn't talking about your upbringing. I was talking about my indoctrination. Well, you know, it's different beliefs in Christianity, and you just have one. I was given mine. That's why I wasn't trying to say how I don't know what you believe. Matter of fact, share your beliefs with me. Go ahead. Continue. My bad. Yes. So I don't believe in the New Testament at all. I don't believe in Christ um, as the savior. I believe that Yah is the only savior. He's the only creator uh, of heaven and earth, the seas and all that in them is. In fact, the flat earth you talk about, he's, he created a flat earth. He created a circular flat disk. He said, you know, it is he that sits above the uh, uh, surface of the earth and he looks down and the inhabitants are his grasshoppers. He goes into detail about the flat earth with the firmament, oh, et cetera, man. et cetera. So, yeah, so, for yeah, he, he did all that. So 
I know, in fact, that the white, the so-called white man, and it's not just the white man, it's the nations, okay? Yeah, never said the white man. He said the nations, in fact, the nations are confederate against his people. And you said something that's very true. It is geoengineering. It is bioengineering, et cetera. In fact, in 1953, that's when they actually started full-blown geo um, uh, biological engineering with foods, et cetera, et cetera. So Yah said he's going to put us in a land that is completely, um, how do you call it, defiled. And the word defile simply means that, look, if it wasn't for GMOs, a lot of the foods we have wouldn't even exist. So in the United States, that is. I mean, there's a reason Europe bans these things. So, um, so Yah is very clear that we are the, are the reason for our uh, destruction. All we need to do is go back and not follow the ways of the enemies, which we're doing right now. So not only did the enemy give us a deity, the sh again, the reason I mentioned chakra is because they're introducing us with all their new inventions to all short sorts of chakra that Yah did not allow us to be exposed to or to indulge in. question, brother? I just, hey, I just want to make a quick... That's been too, too, Bobby. Man, go ahead. Wow. So, yeah, he's saying that the Bible don't talk about chakras, right? Let me ask you a question, my brother. Was there any time in the Bible where any of the saints had a out-of-body experience with Yah? You, you're muted, man. You got to unmute yourself. I, I, number one, I don't believe in saints. I believe in the so-called Old Testament. Listen, stop never... a second. Stop a second. If you do this, I'm going to just move on, man. I ain't finna play semantic games with you. I'm asking a very simple question. I don't care what you call them. Are there any man of, of old in your book that you refer to in the Bible? I hear Hebrews quoting in the Bible all the time, and they mention Moses, Abraham, Jacob. I don't care the type. You don't play these little word games, man. I want to know if do you believe in in any of those characters in the Bible? Let me change my language because I see how you're gonna do this. Do you believe in any of those prophets, as the Bible called them? I don't care what you called them. You got a Bible, right? Yes. So for the sake of talking, we, let's not talk about what you call them or what I call them. Let's just go with what the Bible says so we can have a universal ground. Fair enough? Because you're yes. spending a lot of time explaining your little unique thing, and I just want to get to a point. So this is what I want to say. Do you know about Moses, Abraham, all of these kind of men, Ezekiel, John of Patmos? Are you familiar with these names? Yes. Do you think these men really existed? Only the Old Testament, not the, uh, the new. No, I no, no, no idea. I, I, listen, listen. Either they existed on earth or not, man. It ain't no they existed in the Old or New Testament. That's like me saying, do you think Brother Sanchez existed? Only in the Old Testament. <laughs> Come on, brother. Do you think these people <laughs> really existed or not? The yes Old or Testament no? The, the Old Testament characters existed, you know yes. What? Okay, cool, cool. So... Can you give me, and this is just me learning from you now, I want to know what, can you give me this? Can you give me any of these characters in the Old Testament that had an out-of-body uh, experience with Yahweh, that had what's called a revelation with God, what they can record it and inscribe it in a text? Can, do you remember any? This is not even a debate question. This is just me and you researching together. Yeah, I remember Abraham having one. Okay, so just to go back to chakras, that's why Abraham was able to have an out-of-body experience, his chakras. You have, are you familiar with the concept of something called the seven heavens? I've heard of it, yeah. All right. Those are the seven chakras. Let me show them to you real quick. You see my screen, right? So yep. when Abraham left out of his body and he went, he was in another body and he was talking to God in another dimension, in another body. And that other body, I'm about to show it to you right now. 
Here it is right here. When we rise up out of one body, we go into the next one above it. It's seven heavens because it's seven kashas it's, or seven chakras, if you will. So if you pull up the seven chakra layers and we start going into the seven heavens, you will see that you have a body on each of the heavens. This is why in Judaism, they burn the uh, seven Jewish menorah candlesticks, the seven candlesticks. Now, those seven candlesticks are supposed to be all of the seven primary colors. And the tallest one in the middle being Mount Maru, the heart chakra. See what I'm saying? And if you look at this system right here, this whole little chakra chart, let's pull it up real quick. This is even, I can show you the symbol of Moses, right? Watch this. Moses was talk, was teaching this out-of-body ascension knowledge the same way I'm teaching it. In other words, if Moses was walking the earth right now, he would be talking like me. He would be teaching about the kundalini and the chakras. Here's the artwork associated with Moses. This is the Moses serpent staff or what they call the rod of a sleepies. And this is dealing with the serpent energy going up and down the spinal cord, what we call the kundalini energy. Let me show it to you. So let me also say this. The knowledge that I'm bringing up, it ties it into you, my brother. It makes you special. And anything other than this is just going to be some mythology, some spookism, some God trying to make me scared because I broke a rule and none of that shit don't scare me. If we really want people energy to be right, we need to get them in tune with they self. And this is how we do it, brother. So when they talk about the Kundalini awakening, the word Kundal is the word candle. And it was seven Kundalinis, seven Yugas or seven candlesticks, the Jewish menorah. The word menorah is the aura of man. Man's aura, which is this damn energy field, or his light body, his Christ body. So I don't know what you do, my brother. What I do, right, I put the science back into this shit, and I tie it back into myself. Because I came up learning about foreign gods and they didn't tell me nothing about myself. They was just trying to give me a reason to be scared and to be obedient of some god. Or, and, or to be good so I can get a doggy treat. When all I want to get is an understanding. And that's of who I am, where I am, what I am. And this is what gave me the understanding. And it also gave me a spirit of rebellion against those who kept me away from this here knowledge. And they're going to pay for it because I'm going to spend the rest of my days with this energy exposing the truth. Let's go. Beautiful. Thank you. So, can then you're right. You're absolutely right about the, the chakra um, uh, and menorah. Um, man does have an energy field around them. That is, that is given. Um, but what I'm saying is that in addition to what you said is that as a people, our chakras have been diminished because we are not following what Yah has commanded us to as his people. Which hey, are his hey, I got to cut you off real quick, and I'm sorry to do it, but you got to speak for yourself with stuff like that. That's like saying, hey, man, our colons have been polluted. And I'm like, how you looking in my ass? Pause. That's like saying, man, I, that's like saying, God damn it. That's like saying our veins have been clogged. I'm like, nigga, are you eating fat? Don't, you don't know my damn health situation. See, your spiritual health is the same. Your mental, physical, spiritual health on the HIPAA laws, that's your situation. Can't no man come to me and say, hey, man, your, your chakra's messed up. You don't know my health situation. You got my health records? You had to you you can't diagnose you gotta speak for yourself. See, it tells you in your Bible, every man gonna be judged by God by himself. Only God can judge him. That's a personal this uh walk, brother. You telling everybody in the world, hey, all of y'all fucked up, man, and see, and you fucked up because of this. And that's what the Hebrews do. No, I'm fine. My chakra's good. <laughs> y'all can't do shit to me. 
He need to get his damn chakras right with his envious ass. He need to come listen into this documentary with his damn, he got a temper tantrum problems. Your God's root chakra is out of control, son. How he going to punish me for my chakras when his ass need to be learning from me? Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't make the clarification. You're absolutely right. I don't know you individually, but when Yah speaks of his people, he speaks as a nation. So individually, you might be doing great. Um, but I'm speaking as a nation of people. So you're absolutely right. Uh, there is no such thing well, as a nation of people called Israelites, but there's such thing as a collective of people called humanity. And what we all do as a collective, it, it, it either hurts or helps the environment. And if what we all doing right now is hurting the environment, we're the cause of our own problems. And we got to quit saying it's because we broke the rules of some sky daddy. It's because your ass threw that paper in the river. It's because you won't say nothing about the chemtrails. It's because there's no outcry from humanity about the shit that really matter on this world and everything falling apart because we keep saying, well, it's happening because you disobeying God. No, it's happening because you won't stand up and do shit about it you got a scapegoat Thanks. called god 